All right, good evening. Today is Tuesday, January 3rd, 2023. It's a special meeting and workshop of the Board of Education. Do I have a motion to open the meeting? Lori, second. Laura, all in favor? All right, great. We're just going to um, go into executive session to discuss a legal matter we'll back out at 7.30 for the workshop. Do I have a motion to enter executive session? Lori, second. Laura, all in favor? All right, great. Thank you. See you in a little bit. All right, good evening again. Once again, it's Tuesday, January 3rd, 2023. This is a special meeting and workshop with the Board of Education. We already opened the meeting at 7 o'clock, went into executive session to discuss a legal matter, and then we're back out. So no, no, need, no need to open the meeting. We've done that already. So we can roll right into our next agenda item, which is Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, all right, happy new year to everybody. Hope everybody had a great holiday. Uh, we're gonna roll right into our presentation, um, which is field usage rules, 2021 capital project update, facilities update, and 2023 proposed capital project presentations. Dr. Goodman. Thank you, thank you. Um, if the board might wanna swing around a little yes. bit so that they can see it. Um, Tonight is a very long presentation, so bear with us and we'll have questions at the end. I think it will all come together. Um, but I just wanted to say again to everybody, happy, happy New Year to everybody. And I want to take the opportunity to thank our Board of Education for their leadership, for helping us to continue to move forward in providing the best education for our students, including tonight's presentation, where we are looking to modernize and provide an excellent educational environment for our staff and students. I'd like to thank Faith Sparks for her leadership and stewardship in the construction and planning of the process, teachers and staff who were incredibly flexible throughout the processes and gave us ideas, and students also for their flexibility. In, especially in this building, whether it was putting on sweaters in cold classrooms or taking off sweaters in hot classrooms, eating in other environments, and their patience to relocate classes as things went on in the building. And I want to thank the custodians who helped us navigate the process and take care of facility issues as they arose, and the community for their continued support to ensure Tuckahoe leads the way. Tonight, we present on a number of topics related to facilities. We will begin by presenting on our turf field uses, usage and rules, and then move on to an update of the 2021 project. We will discuss where we were able to complete, what we were able to complete in the 2021 project, and our next steps to complete the scope we were unable to award. Next, we will address emerging and crucial infrastructure needs, then we will put this together and present our proposed 2023 budget. We will be joined by Russ Davison from KG&D, who will summarize our current capital project and propose capital, our, our proposed 2023 capital project. Ms. Sparks will share along the way, and she will also give you all the related costs to all of this. In the upcoming slides, we will discuss the rules for our turf and play fields. We are all committed to providing high quality and safe playing surfaces for our multi-use athletic fields, our play spaces, but we need the help and consideration of the community in protecting the community's investment. On the next slides, we will discuss the rules and hours for the turf fields. To review the, ru the rules of the turf fields at Cottle are listed in this slide shown here. They are also posted along the entrances of the fields. A summary of the rules is no wheels, no bikes, skateboards, or rollerblades, no pets, no food or drink. Adult supervision is essential when on the fields. We also ask that anyone that is on our fields please clean up after themselves. Vandal vandalism or trespassing could be prosecuted. The field is also prohibited from public use when school or school events are in session. The Coddle play Playground is also prohibited from public use when school is in session or during school-related events. The rules for the, the playground area are similar to the turf field. We ask that you please use equipment appropriately and no loitering or dumping is permitted in this area.
This shows the signage and rules displayed for the public at the middle school high school turf field. The, the rules for the middle school high school turf field differ slightly from Cottle in that the middle school high school is only available for use by the public by permit. Our signs clearly state that these facilities are prohibited from public use when school is in session or during school related events. Other than that, the rules for the turf field are the same as Cottle. The next slide is just a continuation of the rules. Uh, no food, no wheels, um, and we ask anyone um, using the field to please clean up after themselves. We are putting measures in place to enforce these rules and the expectations we have. District staff are not always on site to monitor the premises. We do have video surveillance of our fields and we'll be adding additional cameras to these areas. With your help, we are making our athletic fields available for the enjoyment of the community. Please use the fields with common sense and responsibility. Working together, we will provide safe, a safe, quality facility. I would also like to remind the public that dogs are not allowed on our fields or on school grounds. We have had instances of dogs on the new turf field or on Siwinoy Boulevard when school is in session. We kindly ask that you abide by our policy of no dogs on school grounds. As we mentioned before, fields cannot be used by the public during school hours or school related events. Coddle field, track, and playground hours are dawn to dusk. There is no public access to Coddle field, track, and playground during school hours and related events. I know I've said this a number of times, but I just want to reiterate it. Organizations are able to request a permit to use the Coddle turf field for organized sports, but only organizations with a valid permit are allowed on the middle school high school field. The district alone cannot ensure these rules are followed. We rely on the community and the organizations who use our facilities to help protect our investment. In September of 2022, the board revised policy number 1500, public use of school facilities. Some of the changes were there was a change to the required insurance coverage amounts. They were updated as per our insurance carrier. We also updated the wording to the times the middle school, high school turf field is available for permit use on the weekends as noted in this slide. And now for an update on the 2021 capital project. Estimating project cost while a difficult task enter the new era of difficulty amid the challenges beset by supply chain disruptions and inflation. Due to this inflation and supply chain issues, part of the HAVC work and additions and alterations to the Kyle cafeteria were not able to be completed as part of the 2021 project. Despite this setback to our original scope, key components of the 2021 project are either complete or nearing completion. These include, look at that beautiful field. So in green, we have what's completed. In, yet, in yellow, we have what's in progress. The new Cottle Field, again, a, a turf-based playing space for recess athletics and community use included in the construction also for this field is a complex drainage system under the turf field and playground area. The William E. Cottle Playground and Siwanoi Boulevard improvements, providing additional playing space and a safe, engaging enclosure for our Cottle Cubs and community. Those two are completed. Um, in progress is the redesign of the middle school high school library with open learning spaces, breakout rooms for student collaboration, and state-of-the-art equipment and learning furniture in progress, and also in progress is the renovation of the middle school high school cafeteria, including new eating spaces, display boards, and modern furniture and design. These are gonna look incredible and they're all in progress. The HVAC in the new wing of the middle school high school provides air conditioned and mechanical ventilation to provide filtered air to improve air quality and the health and wellness of our student and staff. That's in progress. We are also for security purposes a new keyless entry security hardware at all at the middle school high school will be added to exterior doors and classroom doors. 
This is in progress. We are still waiting for some pieces. Replacement of the fire alarm head and equipment in the middle school and high school is in progress. And repair to the exterior gym stairs by Middle Road in progress. And power washing stone and brick at the front entrance of the middle school, high school is in progress. Now, this next slide are, is of the, of the parts of the project that we were unable to complete due to unprecedented cost escalation. And they are in William E. Cottle, the Cottle renovation, the HAVC in all classrooms in the older portion of the building, and the renovation of single occupancy bathrooms. In the middle school and high school, it's the HVC in the older portion of the building and the masonry restoration. The fact that we were unable to award these does not eliminate the fact that these projects need to be done. As you can see in the upcoming slides, we have included these in our 2023 capital project. Faith will now talk about the costs of the 2021 project. This slide shows an update of the cost of the 2021 capital project. To date, construction costs for the Cottle Field and Siwanoi Boulevard improvements have totaled $1,950,001 and are within the project budget. Construction costs for the middle school high school are at $4,573,056. Other projects costs, such as professional fees and furniture and equipment, total $1,372,730. This brings our total cost to date to $7,895,787. We are also have on the slide um, an estimate for contingency and remaining other fees at $404,213. Once we combine our actual cost to date and our projected remaining costs, we estimate that we will have $1.6 million remaining from the 2021 authorization. $1.6 million is not enough to complete the remaining projects. The need to address the scope that we were unable to award will not go away. Part of the new 2023 proposal that will be discussed later in this presentation includes additional funding that can bridge the gap to help us complete these projects. Before we speak of the exciting proposal for 2023, we want to share some of the improvements and upkeep we have engaged in using our annual budget. It's no secret that our beautiful historic middle school high school is 91 years old. It is inevitable that a building of that age will require significant upgrades and repair as time go on. The last large capital project in this building was in 2008. On the next slide, we will cover some of the repairs and replacements we have had to make in the past year and a half. School administrators and our facility team are keeping facilities in the best possible shape through routine maintenance and regular inspections and other preventative tasks. But because of aging infrastructure, we have needed to respond to emergency or urgent needs, and these pressing needs continue. Most of these are stopgap measures in response to weather-related disasters and aging infrastructure, such as pipes or roofs. With an annual budget, we can respond to these items in small or isolated incidents, sort of band-aids. With a bond, we can invest in long-term prevention and preservation. Here we will list just a few of the projects we've had to address in the last year and a half. As you will see, and as we have said before, many of these stem from the fact that our buildings are old. The first item on the list is that we've replaced a deteriorated water line that caused flooding on the lower level. In the summer of 2021, a deteriorated water main pipe coming from the tunnel broke and caused major flooding in the lower level by classroom 128 and the cafeteria. Room 309 in the middle school had a lintel that had deteriorated and was leaking. This was also replaced. Power washing and sealing of some areas on the third floor, which is masonry work. The classrooms on the third floor in the older part of the building where the T-shaped roof is, have had significant water infiltration from both the roof and the masonry. We power washed and sealed some of the problem areas to the extent our budget allowed. If you recall last year, we had a number of rooms closed due to these issues. 
These sections of the roof need a complete replacement and a significant amount of masonry work. We also had to do some pointing near the middle school front entrance. We had a number of steam pipe replacements in the tunnel. Under the middle school high school, there's a tunnel that houses a large system of steam and water pipes. The majority of these pipes are in poor condition and have deteriorated significantly. There are areas of this tunnel that we cannot access at this time because there is asbestos. This year and last year, we were able to replace some steam pipes that were broken and leaking, but we have only addressed a small fraction of the, the deteriorated pipes. We still have large steam leaks. Not only is the system operating inefficiently, our heating costs have increased significantly due to these leaks. Roof patching and repairs in the areas that do not require a full replacement is another thing we were able to do this year. This past spring, we had an infrared roof scan done to see the condition of our rooms, our roofs. While some areas need a complete replacement, there were other areas where a repair and patch would solve the issue. One of those areas was over the gym. We had to address this ASAP as water was leaking down onto our new gym floor. We've also had to replace some pumps in the tunnel. Being that we have a tunnel under our building, we have a series of pumps to pump out groundwater. Some of these pumps failed and we had to replace them. Not only are they working hard to pump out groundwater, but leaking steam from the pipes creates additional water and condensation that just adds to the problem. We also had to replace our gym floor due to damage from a deteriorated steam pipe. One of the bigger steam leaks happened in the area under the gym and garage. Um, it, this leak caused our floor to buckle and fail. Um, we were able to replace the piping under the gym floor and insurance did cover the cost of the gym floor replacement. We also recently installed six new cameras at the middle school high school and repaired some other cameras. We installed a new digital video doorbell at both the middle school, high school, and Cottle. The PA system, which is also our bell and clock system at the middle school, high school, has needed numerous repairs over the past year and a half and is currently beyond its useful life and no longer supported. We are so thankful to our custodians who do their best to troubleshoot and get the system up and running when it's down. 15 of Cottle's cameras are also in still in need of an upgrade. This slide shows the conditions in our tunnel and the conditions of the pipes and how they are deteriorating. The repairs we mentioned are just a small part of what still needs to be done. It is unsustainable both operationally and financially to wait until there is an emergency situation to address these infrastructure needs. The issues discussed in the previous slides are all list were all listed in our 2021 building condition survey. The 2023 capital project proposal includes projects to address these items such as roof replacement, pipe replacements in the tunnel, new security cameras, and a new PA system at the middle school high school. Moving forward, the district's 2023 capital project proposal addresses completing the 2021 capital project and addressing emerging infrastructure needs identified in our 2021 building condition survey. This all brings us to the 2023 proposed capital project. The proposal was developed in collaboration with our facilities committee. Next, we will discuss the planning process behind the 2023 proposal. We look at both our facilities needs and what we did not complete in the last capital project due to the unprecedented inflation. In collaboration with our facilities committee, the, plan, the planning process began with the District 2021 Building Condition Survey. We, did a, we do a building condition survey every five years. The building condition survey is done based on visual inspection. Then KG&D and their engineers came on site and did an in-depth analysis of items identified in the BCS. The architects and engineers from KG&D and CalG Construction then reviewed and assigned budgets to our building condition survey based on this in-depth review. Over a series of meetings with our committee, our facilities committee, we reviewed projects that were identified in our BCS and classified them in the following categories. Urgent priority issues, 
projects that will need to be done in the next five years and projects that will need to be addressed sometime after five year mark. The committee considered the unfinished scope of the 21, 2021 project a must do and took into consideration the emerging issues that reeled their head this past year and a half. Um, we continue to discuss this bond, um, this proposed bond in a number of meetings in the district's blast and on our website, and it was unanimously, unanimously voted for by our Board of Education. We are thankful to our dedicated committee members who worked tirelessly to review and prioritize the needs of our facilities. The proposed project will be for additional funding to complete the 2021 project, as I said, and new funding for the critical infrastructure. This infrastructure component of the project addresses, again, the major infrastructure needs and will preserve the longevity of our assets and facilities. These investments aim to maintain a state of good repair in our building and modernize our assets. The district does, as we said, ongoing routine work every year. The proposed project is not routine maintenance, but instead it is composed of projects that fall outside the definition of routine maintenance. Replacing these big ticket items that are approaching the end or near end of their useful lives through this bond will avoid costly emergency action in the future, achieve economies of scale, and minimize disruption to students. Investment in school facilities is effective not only in achieving its primary goal of improving health and safety, but also in inducing secondary effects such as heightened academic performance. A quality education environment can have a positive influence on the attitudes and behaviors of both student and staff. I now turn the meeting over to Russ Davidson from KG&D. Uh, good evening. Um, I can barely see the screen, so um, but I will do my best. The, um, well, thank you, Amy and Faith. You uh, covered a lot of the ground that was in this presentation, so I will go a little quickly. But um, <clears throat> you've talked about the improvements to Siwanoi Boulevard and your beautiful new field at Cottle. I'm glad it's getting uh, lots of use. Um, you know, the uh, high school cafeteria is under construction. This is uh, showing some of the construction photos. And this is the rendering of what it will look like. So that area with the two black screens in the back is the area you're seeing on the left. Uh, so it's really coming together. It's a little further along at this point, actually. This is upstairs. And uh, uh, this is still downstairs where you see the two columns, uh, which you'll see in the rendering are the uh, columns covered with tile uh, in the rendering. The uh, upstairs, uh, this is the rendering for the new middle school, high school library with the new doors that open up to the exterior. And this is the construction photo. You can see those new openings on the left side and where the uh, seating will be. <clears throat> so you talked about one of the things that wasn't uh, able to be funded in the 2021 project. Uh, and, and a big element there is the improvements to the Cottle Cafeteria. So this is the existing Cottle Cafeteria. This was the uh, proposal that uh, everyone was hoping uh, could be afforded in the 2021 bond. That it included a little extension, a uh, very modest extension, uh, uh, about six feet out towards the playing field with new glass and windows. That turned out to be very expensive. Um, and the proposal now is to also renovate the Cottle Cafeteria and also add windows, but not bump it out to six feet. And uh, we all feel this is much more affordable. Um, it really does provide some additional seating. Uh, the little bump out didn't provide that much additional capacity uh, in the first place. And everyone's very pleased with this uh, revised arrangement. So this is the blank exterior wall of the existing Cottle Cafeteria. And for those of you who don't know, this was originally the uh, multi-purpose room that was also the gymnasium. So that's why it had no windows. And uh, long ago, you added a gymnasium to the facility, but the, the uh, multi-purpose room was never really fully converted to a cafeteria. So this was, I'm sorry, this was the original version with the little uh, bump, modest bump out in new windows. And this is the proposed new version with bay windows with a surround very similar to the classroom addition that was recently completed. 
So uh, as uh, Amy uh, <clears throat> put it very clearly, the, the uh, district-wide plan has two purposes. One is to complete projects from the 2021 bond, and then the second one is additional infrastructure work that is needed to keep the buildings in acceptable condition. So at the elementary school, we're talking about, again, the air conditioning for the classrooms that wasn't, uh, was part of the first project. Um, and additional uh, infrastructure work is door replacement and additional cameras. Um, and so the total work for uh, Cottle Elementary is 3.3 million 450,000. Um, Faith mentioned your uh, infrared scan. We also had a roofing specialist uh, who's familiar with your roofs, walk each roof and assess them. And the work at the middle school, high school um, includes partial roof replacement. Um, the other work at the middle school, high school is new air conditioning for the classrooms in the older portions of the building and some high, uh, additional masonry restoration. The, um, the additional work is the roof, masonry repair, and really important replacement of all that steam piping and steam traps that are in the pipe tunnels. Um, it's also replacement of all the steam traps that are above the pipe tunnels and repairing leaking plumbing piping. Uh, replace the entire PA intercom bell and clock system, which I believe uh, Faith mentioned you've been patching together. And then if there's funding available, uh, we're gonna look to uh, replace as much of the interior lighting uh, as the budget will allow for $4.8 million at, at the uh, high school. So the additional funding for all the work at Tuckahoe Middle School High School is $5.8 million. Um, and the total amount of new funding being requested is $9,250,000. And <clears throat> again, as Faith mentioned, approximately $1.6 million in funding is available from the uh, <clears throat> 2021 bond is not included in that amount. And then 750,000 of this total will be provided by transfer from the district's capital reserve and 8.5 million will be the new bond issuance. So Thank it's a little, you. A little confusing, but well, that's how it's I'm all put together. I'm gonna say it again in a different way. <laughs> so if you didn't get it the first time, <laughs> um, the 2023 bond description is as, um, as Russ just put it, the 2021 project and the additional infrastructure work that we already talked about. On the next slide is how much it costs. Again, at Cottle, the scope of work at the elementary school includes the renovation of the cafeteria, multi-purpose room, renovation of single toilet rooms and air conditioning for $3 million. Additional infrastructure work includes upgrading older security cameras and replacing interior doors and replace lighting to the extent the budget will allow for 450000 and the additional funding for all the work at Cottle is 3450 The scope of the work at the middle school high school includes masonry restoration and new air conditioning for the classrooms and the older portion of the building for a million dollars. Additional infrastructure work at the building includes partial roof replacement and related masonry repair, replacement of steam piping and traps in the pipe tunnels, additional masonry re restoration, replacement of all steam traps above the pipe tunnels, repair leaking plumbing pipes, and replace the entire PA intercom bell and clock system. The replacement of interior lightings again is as we can do it within the budget and is 4800000 the additional funding for all the work done at the middle school high school is five million eight hundred thousand. Okay, Faith will explain it to you too. So this takes um, this slide has a chart. It summarizes what Russ presented and Amy presented as well. It, it puts it onto a chart, a chart, and summarizes it by building. So um, there's also a note on the right hand side. So the total amount of work we're going to do is nine million two hundred and fifty thousand. The way we plan to fund that is um, $8.5 million in bonds and $750,000 from the Capital Reserve Fund. Why now? Upgrades and renovations are needed to the Cottle Cafeteria. You all saw that.
picture due to the age of the middle school and high school. These infrastructure needs will only cause to worsen. Waiting could lead to more severe and costly repairs and improvements to ventilation, allow the better quality for everybody and all the health and safety issues we are taking care of with cameras also. This is a solution that provides students with a safe, healthy environment to learn. Now Ms. Sparks will present on the estimated impact of this proposed capital project on our taxpayers. So I'll start with some statistics about our district. The total assessed value is $17,943,842. The median assessed value for a typical home in our district is $9,150, and there are 1,262 single-family homes in this district. All of this information was provided to us from the Town of East Chester's Assessor's Office. To put these numbers into perspective, the 2022-23 school tax rate is $1,694.40 per $1,000 of assessed value. So a house with the median assessed value of $9,150 will have a school tax bill of $15,504 for the 2022-23 school year. How to pay for a capital improvement project. Large-scale projects cannot be accomplished within an annual budget. School districts issue bonds to fund large capital improvement projects. Debt service payments are typically amortized over time, usually aligned with building aid. This also helps us maximize New York State building aid. School districts may only borrow up to the amount of funds that have been authorized by a voter-approved referendum. School districts can also use a capital reserve to finance all or part of construction, reconstruction, or acquisition of a specific type of capital improvement or a specific, an acquisition of a specific type of equipment. For this proposed project, the total cost is $9,250,000. The district is proposing to use $750,000 of the capital reserve fund that was established in 2020. The current balance in that fund is $1,550,011. This leaves us with $8,500,000 to be funded with debt or bonds. We estimate the annual cost of this debt, cost of this debt to be $805,000 per year. We are anticipating annual building aid at $148,000, or approximately 24%, bringing the net cost of debt after building aid to $657,000 annually. We estimate this project would cost the average homeowner $335 annually. This chart shows our projected debt service with our current debt in blue and the proposed new debt in red. You will see we have a jump in debt service for the 23-24 school year as we begin to pay down short-term financing for the 2021 capital project. The total amount of new funding being requested is $9,250,000. Approximately $1.6 million in funding is still left from the 2021 bond. $750,000 of this total will be provided from the district's capital reserve, and $8.5 million will be new bond issuance. This shot slide shows what the proposition that will go before the voters on February 15, 2023 will look like. Why is it in two parts, a part A and a part B? Well, part A is where you see what we want to do, that we propose to expend $9.25 million on the project we described, and part B is how we plan to pay for it. This includes taking money from our capital reserve 750000 and bonding the remaining amount of $8.5 million. Our next steps. So we already completed the first step with the board approving the, um, the and discussing the referendum and approving it at their December 12, 2021 meeting. Next, we will plan a series of virtual town hall presentations. Community referendum is February 15, 2023 preparation of detailed design and plans by the architect, and then SCD submittals, and then construction. 
So again, I would like to thank everybody who's been involved in this, the facility committee members. I wanted to put their names down. Some of them ha are from the past project. Some have been on both projects. And, so, and, and one person, I think, is new on this. So I just wanted to give them a shout out because we met a lot with the facilities committee over, over since, I, since we've started all of this on both projects. The Board of Education, of course, the custodians, the administrators, the faculty and staff, the students and community members. We thank our consultants, Anthony Russo, KG and D um, Architects and Cal G Construction. And of course, we thank Faith Sparks. Thank you. And now for discussion. Okay. Good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm standing here. I just got over COVID. I am not contagious anymore, but I'm being extra careful. Are you going to stay there then? Yeah, just so that I'm not. All right, it's okay. up to you. I don't want to wear a mask, so I'm staying like okay. six feet away. All right, uh, excellent presentation. Uh, a, lot, a lot in there, obviously, very, very dense. Um, everything that you covered as a board, I think we've talked about many, many times. Yeah. I doubt there's going to be a lot of questions, uh, although I could be wrong, because this is all stuff that we've really covered over and over again. So unless there's any pending questions or anything that anybody wants to discuss about the presentation, I would propose that we spend our little bit of discussion time talking about our plan for bullet number two, which on your next steps, which is communication, and getting the word out. Um, I think that's what we really have to turn our attention to. You know, the holidays came and went, and now we turn around, and we're six weeks away from this. This is like coming up fast. And I have a very funny feeling, and I don't know if you guys disagree with me, that very few people in our community are even tracking that we're doing this. I don't think the, really the word is out on this, really. And um, partly I think that's because there's an ongoing project going on. People are probably thinking, oh, they're, they're doing something now. And here we are trying to come out with another one on a off, um, or not on a regular voting schedule. So I think we need to get to work. Um, on how we're getting the, the word out and the, and the, uh, and the um, information out to the community. Pete, so, I just had two questions, yep. actually. Yeah, go ahead. So the first was, um, do we know when the Tucko Cafeteria and Library will be done? I know things have been Yeah, that's actually really good. I wanted to bring that up, too. So, yeah. yeah. Russ, do you want to answer those, those questions about when? Scary. Yeah. Frightening. Yeah, the good point. I wanted to bring and, that up, too, so I'm, I'm glad you Yeah, why don't you that. both get up? <laughs> Well, as it stands right now with the, um, with the cafeteria, the ceramic tile is about 70% complete. So by the middle of next week, probably about 100% will be completed. Uh, with the can library. We can't hear yeah. you. Sorry, can we you can't hear you louder? too well. I'm sorry. Is it, is it on? Is it? Green light is on. Is that better? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, you okay. go. That's better. Sorry. Uh, as I said, the uh, cafeteria is moving along. The ceramic tile is 70% complete, and by next week it should be 100% complete. Oh. Uh, in the library, update on that, uh, the um, uh, masonry and the metal decking in the study area has been installed and inspected, and we expect the concrete fill on deck to be placed by the middle of next week. The electrical and the um, uh, ductwork roughing is about 95% complete now. Once the ceilings have been installed, then they can stop making their air drops and putting in the fixtures once they arrive. Um, as far as the facade and uh, the science wing, that's pretty much as it was at the last uh, update. Uh, with the gym stairs, uh, just last week the treads were put in. So uh, everything is moving along, but as you know from the last meeting, we still have uh, great concerns with the rooftop units and the direct outside air units. So we're waiting for an update on that. And uh, worst case, we may have to start looking at alternatives temporarily that we can use. We still open up the cafeteria if we don't have the units on time. So, when so will I, the students yeah. be able to use the cafeteria? Because you're saying 100%, but we have to get like a C of O or whatever that's called. You would have to get a C of O, but it's the ceramic tile that's going to be 100% complete. There's still other work that has to go on. Okay, and so we have to tie in the HVAC equipment that we're waiting for. Right right. Can they use it without the HVAC or no? I'm sorry? Can they use it without that? Are you saying the HVAC? Well, we're going to be looking into what existing systems are still operational, what we have to do to bring in outside air. We'll be working with Russ 
his team and OLA, the mechanical engineer, to see what we can do temporarily if need be. So it would be the earliest the students are brought back in then to the cafeteria? Probably at best right now we're looking at March, April. March, what? April. When was that, yeah. March? March? Or March, April. April. Oh, yeah. God. That's oh, really disappointing. Yeah. When can we get like an update on that? We've uh, asked the uh, contractors to give us a recovery schedule. We're expecting the recovery schedules by the end of this week, and then we'll have a better picture. Uh, the main thing is getting confirmation dates from the, um, from the suppliers of the HVAC equipment, which is very, very hard to do. Not only your project, other projects were having very much difficulty with the um, uh, shipment dates and the availability March. of No, the I HVAC understand equipment. what you're saying. I yeah. just, my concern, to be honest, is that we're going out to bid a bond and we had given dates initially to the public of like October. Right. Right? That was how we came out of the gate and now mm -hmm. we're going to be the end of school year. Right. And that was based on, at that time, what the projections were going to be, what we thought the availability was going to be, but it hasn't well, I think I, that our way. last meeting, weren't we still thinking January? Yeah, that's what I Yeah, thinking. that's what yeah. I remember, too. I'm we actually, were, yeah. We were thinking January for a few of the areas that we could possibly turn over, but at that one, I also mentioned to you that we're still waiting for the HVAC equipment, and overall, we were still looking at around March for completion of everything. I think we need to see something like in writing with the timeline because I'm a little, to be honest, taken back because my last impression was that January was yeah. it and we're in yeah, January. I was thinking any day now, actually. Well, and, and I was thinking any day now and we're thinking, now we're right. saying April, that's a big difference, yeah. Yeah, those, those, those pictures were pretty scary to me. And I also shown. think it's really important that we're going out for another bond, asking for a large sum of money, that right. we're transparent and that we have clear communication. Mm -hmm with our constituents as to what we're doing here. You know, and I don't think that's been well communicated. So okay. I think we need like a real timeline within like the next week or two with actual dates that are realistic. We will Including with the C C O because that how quickly would the town be able to come out and even inspect? And that we're notified proactively when there are delays. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so we're not subject to the town. We don't have to get the CO from them. It's from SCD. And okay. we don't need a CO for this, right, Russ? Um, you, you technically have a CO for the building, so you don't need, you don't need another one. Um, but we do want to make sure it's safe, yeah. obviously, right. to move in. And um, we will look with the construction manager at alternatives to the ventilation so that you can use the space. Um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of the spaces were upgrading the ventilation. So the standard of care has to be when the students come back, it, ha it has to be no worse than it was when they left. So the upgraded portions don't have to be done, but you do have to have something. Uh, so we're going to look at things like windows and window fans and other things to provide the fresh air so you have a, at least what you had before. And hopefully that can um, help you get students in there uh, sooner. Can, can, I, can I ask you guys to come hear. on up here and sit with us? Because I, I, I can't hear you guys too well. There's like a wind tunnel. I'm sure you're coming through the microphone okay for the it's audience. Just, but it's I, bad tonight. So I there's can't a hear vent on behind us. And we, come, I can't hear anything. Here. I mean, I can hear a little bit. I just wanted to ask Russ about maybe just piggyback the timeline that we're disappointed with right now. But um, why? Pete, we, have, we have two seats. We have, I'm sorry. Yeah, we have a seat. We have, we have two. We have somebody. Can, somebody can sit here, and then if you want to use that microphone, keep that microphone, and or if you want to come over here. Okay. Also, I think maybe okay. if you could explain. Yeah. yeah. Maybe if you could explain this change in the timeline. Right. From what we originally heard. Yeah. What's so? I mean, again, what happened? I, I think last time yeah. we we had you guys here, which I think was only not even a month ago, I think. Um, I think we were all in the impression we were on target for uh, use of the cafeteria yeah, minus sometime the, minus in the, the January. Minus the HVAC, right? We, yeah. we did right. discuss that air yeah. conditioning was going to be, but that or it was now in the winter that it wasn't going to be, you know. Right. So that's a pretty big problem. push yeah. in a very short period of time. So can we get a little, and maybe you said it over there, I just couldn't hear you guys. Mm -hmm. What's the explanation as to why we've, we're jumping so far ahead now in terms of our original timeline? Or when I say original, I mean last time we met. The, the bottom line is that we have not been able to uh, receive any confirmed shipment dates from the HVAC contractor on the equipment. He's waiting okay. back from his supplier. 
So that's why we have asked for a recovery schedule and we hope to get that by the end of this week. And uh, again, a lot's going to, a lot is going to depend on what feedback they get from their suppliers. So I'm not trying to give you a hard time here, but mm -hmm. the HVHC issue mm -hmm. is not kind of, it's not really jiving with me in terms of what we're seeing on those pictures. Like, like that's, that, those units How are accurate. How accurate? Those, those pictures, pictures are from a few months ago. Are they? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me go okay. down the and same see pictures like we right showed now. you last month. Okay. We, well, we didn't update, scary we didn't update it, that presentation. Yeah. Uh, so those are about six weeks old. Oh, okay. okay. All right. So okay. that's one thing. But it looks a lot different thing. than that today. Oh, okay. okay. So maybe we should have updated that considering we're going out for a bond. That's I, fine. You know what I mean? Like, I just... Yeah. No, no, it's a okay. good point. I mean, so it, it is concerning. Yeah, now so I'm like, I'm, I'm not trying to be difficult, but I feel like, you know, we're in a time where inflation is high, the economy is unstable, people are going to, we're asking for a large sum of money. Our side of this, the way we're producing, does not seem like we're really on our A game here, especially if we're showing pictures from six weeks ago. Um, and also, if we're waiting on the HVAC, and maybe this is my own ignorance, it was my understanding last time that the HVAC wasn't a deal breaker as far right. as occupancy. Right. So mm -hmm. why is it now a deal breaker for occupancy? Well, that's what we were talking about now, trying to see what systems we can work with to get the students into the cafeteria while we're waiting for the actual units to come in. So as far as the deal breaker, we were meaning that there might be other ways to work around it. So, so I guess what's changed from I what's changed from last month to this month, where last month it wasn't a deal breaker and we could use whatever we had or whatever. Have, have we discovered something different? Like, are we thinking that what we have is not going to be as bad as or whatever we're saying as it was or the equivocal to what they had to let mm -hmm. them use the space? No, the big thing that happened since the last go around is that we thought within this time frame we'd get a confirmation date, and we still have not received a confirmation date from the supplier. So it's, it has a little bit of a snowball effect. So is this about supply chain? Yes. So what percentage is done then? If you, if you put the HVAC aside, and I was right. to visualize that cafeteria right now, putting that picture aside, what, what is the percentage of completion? I would say right now you're about 70, 75% complete. Okay, and the 25%, if I wasn't to include the HVAC, what, what, is, what is the 25% that we're working uh, on? The ceilings, the finishes, that type of thing. Okay. But most, most of your major work, most of your major heavy work, roughing work, framing, sheetrocking, that's all been completed. And what about the furniture? Is that? Uh, furniture, um, I, I don't have an update on that. So um, the fur a lot of, most of the furniture is in um, for the cafeteria, some of our large the large tables are not in, um, but we do have the desks that we've been using for lunch now that could we could use temporarily mm -hmm. until they are in. So right now we don't have a, a delivery date for the tables for the cafeteria, but all the chairs and everything else are right. in. So that 25%, I would imagine, I just don't see why we can't get that cafeteria to operate. Yeah, because the, the, the units that you're waiting on Correct me if I'm wrong. They, they go out on the they go, they're on the roof, right? And then they attack. Units, yes. So they really don't have any. They're not slowing anything down, or, or if they are, let me know. In terms of the finish inside. No, they're, they're not, not. They're not slowing anything. It'll just be the final connections of the air outlets, that type of so thing. So then, why are we have the commissioning and the balance? Why aren't we at least on schedule for for end, mid to end January completion of the interior? Why mm -hmm. is that still behind? So, well, so put the HVHC you know, aside. Right. If the interior is independent of that, why isn't right. the interior done? Well, we're still tracking for that time period, for, the, for that. For, for what time period? For the, in, for the, for the end of January, okay. February time period oh. for the finishes and that type of thing. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I think the, the, the point of all these, this, these questions um, as a board, I think if I can speak on behalf of everybody, is that we want, that, we want the kids in the, in the cafeteria. And we don't want to wait till April, March or April, by the way. So, I mean, I just, I'm shocked at the, that we can't have the kids in because I know personally my two ask me like every week, can we get back, back in the cafeteria? Which is, I just think it's, we anticipated October, then we said December, and then we said January. And I really don't think, unless we can, you know, come up with a better reason to not, I don't see why we can't have the kids in there. I mean, maybe. Yeah, because the HVAC is really, isn't that really about air conditioning? 
Well, it's so, air conditioning. And, and it's also heat. And so we're in the it's dead of winter, so right. with that. Yeah, what would that look like? Would right. putting yeah. spa space heater, heaters in or? Is that safe? No, you, you, you have heat. Um, we um, have heat. Yeah, the ventilation also, it, it's about fresh air. Okay. It's about that, fresh air. But it's prior about to that, they just open windows. introducing and changing the fresh air. Uh -huh. So, um, right, but it's not any worse than what it was before. Right? <clears throat> exactly. Your building's from 1932. The standard for fresh <laughs> air in 1932 was open a window. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> so, so I guess we're not understanding why. I guess based on I, that, I, why, I'm, why I'm we're not just, getting. I'm just hearing that the units are late tonight. Yeah. And I'm trying to help you find a workaround to to legally occupy right. the space. So could we which do? Which I believe is as long as you can return it to the same ventilation state that you had before. It will be legally to reoccupy, and right. we'll help you with that. that so that would sense. just be open it, opening of a, a window. Or two. I think we probably want to look at something in the way of fans because mm -hmm. you used to have some ceiling fans in there that okay. moved air. So we want to find a way to move some air in a sort of temporary fashion. What you're getting new is energy recovery ventilation that not only mm -hmm. brings in fresh air, it uses the heat from the uh, current air to preheat it. And you'll get fresh air changes. It'll be a lot of healthier environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I nope. think that that's not going to happen until you get those units in place. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. So then, theoretically, we could have the interior complete end of January, beginning of February, and possibly use, we'll, use we'll, it. We'll mm -hmm. work with Calgy and the contractor to come up with some interim version if these units are truly out there till March or April. Now, what, what about the, uh, the library? Where, where we are? What's the timeline for that? The library for usage. Yeah. For the kids. Uh, By the way, are these spaces accessible to us tonight? I'd like to see them tonight if we can. Can we? Is there any reason why we can't walk through them tonight? I, Faith? I think we can get in them. I'd have to make a phone call, but I think we can get I'd, I'd like to see them. tonight before we leave how things look. Go the ahead, library was still looking in February. February. Now, why is that? Was that, was that was that the original? That, that, was, yeah. that was February. February. I was a little yeah. bit behind yeah. the cafeteria. The cafeteria is more, I guess, surprising. But it sounds okay. So are we are we saying now that because before it was March, April, but that was HVAC. So it sounds like we're going to have the kids in there, in end the, of this month. Am I? Does that sound? February. Well, that's what we're going to be shooting for. Yes. Okay. Yeah. For, for the we, cafeteria. Yeah, and cafeteria. The library. Library February. Right. So, library February. I mean, yeah, I mean, library is important too, but the cafeteria is. And is I think more weekly essential. updates to Teresa's point. I mean, remember the last um, project? There was a point where we were getting. It doesn't have to be detailed or just an, just sort of. I think on the capsule. I know we we, we do get updates. Um, Dr. Goodman, Faith are great that way. But I think maybe just to, you know, give us. You know, we're. we're 80 percent or 85 you know what i mean and so we need to feel like you're on track as a and we're not surprised because surprise is kind of hard. Yeah, yeah i mean i mean you have been giving us some updates in the capsule yes. which we appreciate yes. and pictures and all that um, stuff when yeah so but um you know and, and if it's not appropriate for us to talk about this here let me know but is there are we having any issues with contractor performance and contractor hours being put in and more, i mean i'm just i'm suspect i'm kind of reading between the lines here and i'm kind of thinking there's some other factors at play here mm -hmm. other than just equipment because of how much this timeline has moved. So, I mean, is there anything else that we should be talking about in terms of where maybe we're falling short? Well, other than the equipment, we are, as, as typical on projects, we're having ebb and flow of manpower. Manpower. So there, there, so there are some manpower issues? Yes. In terms of getting the, the amount of manpower we expect to be on there? Getting crews. Okay. Now, is there any remedy for us on that? We have been talking to the contractors, and uh, the last thing that uh, we may do once we have a discussion is to start sending letters to their uh, particular bonding companies, letting them know that their contractors are falling behind and what they can do to help uh, push them along. Okay. Have our attorneys been looped in on that? Um, so, not yet. They're getting ready to draft these letters yeah. to them. I know you mentioned that in your capsule, so that's yeah. why I brought it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. Um, my only other question is, when we talked about the um, coddle, hang on, I, have to, I didn't have a pen. Um, what was the, you said there was not much of a seating difference between the bump out and no bump out, what was it? Like, well, in the coddle cafeteria, <laughs> you had said by not doing the bump out, we weren't losing much seating. So what, how much seating was it with the bump out versus no bump out? I think we're talking about 10 or 15 more seats. Oh, that's it. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, I just have another just question about um, the timeline, just so that whoever's listening at home if, and people start to pay more attention, hopefully, as we communicate this and they might want to go back and look at meetings. Um, so just so that, just to piggyback on what you said, Pete, was that this seven week or six week is, we're, we're rushing this because the goal is that we want that cafeteria, right, to be done in the summer time. Really good point. So the cafeteria redesign timeline. has already been completed. And this week, we're going to be sending you to SED to update your building permit. So immediately when you get the funding approval, we will be able to rebid the Cottle Cafeteria for a summer 23 start. And that's why this timing is important. Right. 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 And I think the, the other thing I think to just highlight is, um, and thank you, Ms. Sparks, for Faith for putting together. I'm very, very clear. and. Um, I think easy to follow. Sometimes you read, you listen to these budget. It's it's yeah. it's kind of hard to wrap your head around bonds and all these things that districts do. It's not like anything else in the world. <laughs> um, but I think that that the take home message that certainly I see is that that 335 that you mentioned per household, on average. Okay, it could be more or less a little bit. But that average, um, and you mentioned the debt coming off. So when would a household, if we were to approve this, see that 300? 35, and then what does that look like going out? So just me as a taxpayer thinking, what is what, is, what are the ramifications? And you know, and I, yeah, and, and and thankfully it's not. I mean, it's <coughs> certainly people have different financial situations, but when you see the dire need of certainly the infrastructure that's going on in our district, um, you know, it's an investment that we all have to sort of. And I, so I, I'm I'm pleased with that number, um, but just can you can you just repeat that again? And then how, when does it come on to our books? And what would that look like for a home? Uh, so we have a few options for when it comes onto the books. We would start with a short-term financing, which is a ban, which is a much smaller amount to the budget. So the, that $335 per year wouldn't start right away. So depending on when we go into long-term financing, into bonds, that when it would start, that's when it would start. Um, so it could be one or two years into the project. So next year, we would have some impact from this project if the voters approve it, but it would be small. Mm -hmm. um, and then going forward, once we convert into a bond, which could be, depending on when the interest rates are good, two years, we could stay in five years, then it would be there and it would last um, for however long the bond is amortized, which would be um, probably to line up with our building aid, which would be 15 years. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. So if we can, um, maybe just have a quick little discussion about what the what the plan is for communication. So I know um, I'm sure you guys are working on a mailer or something to yeah. go out to the community. What, what's the timeline on that? Yes, we're working. We just after this, this this gives us the information that we're going to use for a mailer, and then we're starting to work on that. Um, and we will get that out soon. We have to watch our timing a little bit. Um, you know, you want to make sure that... You don't want it too early. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. You, you want to hit I don't that know sweet quite spot. how to say yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. No, um, I got you. Yeah. 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 But we want to start having more discussions. And we talked about last time having a town hall meeting where people yeah. can do it virtually because yep. we see, like, people are getting used to that. And um, we think we would get a lot of people to <laughs> sign on or they can even listen to it. So we would like to do that. Um, and so then, I'm, I'm going to suggest that we do... We schedule two town halls. Right. Uh, I think we should do one maybe the week of the 17th. 16th is, is Martin Luther King Day, so that, that week. Mm -hmm. And maybe one the week before, which would be the week of the, of the 8th, right. February 8th. And one virtual and, and one hybrid. And it's, or even both yeah. hybrid. Yeah. So both if hybrid. people are reading the happenings, it has been mentioned all the time in that. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I yeah. think some people may have an idea about it, but I think really, ha I think I've heard that people are reading it. I think that um, to really that hear it. It goes out to the district, right? Yes. I know, but I feel like for something like this, and I hate to say this, but I feel like we get more voters who are not from the district. Do you know, like not within our school district, the students. Oh, you were talking about the total community. Yes. I'm talking the total community. Yeah, no, I think we definitely need to. I think, look, the district is going to be a, a big part of it, but we have to make sure we're reaching Because the mailer out goes out to the entire district. Yeah, and we have to make to sure that everybody yeah. knows about it because it not only helps the students in the district, it certainly helps with home prices and all of that. Right. That no, makes a difference in. Yep. 
but um, we really do need the support of the entire community, but especially people who are using the school, so we gotta get that out to them. Oh, absolutely, right, right. no, 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 absolutely. But, but we like could invite everybody to the town right, hall. Right. Um, what about getting, I know you have it in the happenings, but what about getting something more prominent on, the, on our landing page and our website? Is that, is that a plans for that to happen soon? Yeah, we've, we developed we've a web page for it. It is it's it. on the website. Yeah. Okay. Come look and, then so, and, then and people media. can click on the happenings and see that. Now they'll be able to click on the happenings and see this presentation. We could do that. Right. Yeah, so we have been doing click-ons, and we do have it on our, on our website. Okay. But and we then, will continue. And then some social media postings as well on our yeah, Facebook I, and our... Yeah, I've waited for the social media until we yeah. did this. And then, uh, and then we probably should have solicited the help with a PTA, too, in terms of getting... And this PTA is right really a big piece of that. Yeah. So we, we as it to, always so, has so I'll keep talking to you guys you know, about it. this stuff. We need, to, we need to get going on. We'll make a timeline that you can see. We'll share it yeah. and get your input. And I think, like we did Yeah, last communications time. timeline would be yes. really nice. Okay. To, if, we, if you can put that together. Yeah, um, okay. Because like I said, you wake up from you wake up from the holidays, and it's like boom, yeah, it's here. It's here. Yeah. You know, and and I do I do think this one is I, I am concerned. This one's kind of sneaking up on our community a little bit, just because they they see work being done. You know, they're not necessarily. You yeah. know, I, I get nervous by how many how few people come to these meetings. I'm assuming people are watching at home, but I'm we really don't know. I'm not sure they're watching the meetings. I hope they're reading. And also, I think, we, you know, with the PTA and other groups, we can get the word out more. But I think you're yeah. right. I, mean, I don't know how many people are watching, but I do think people watch because I d definitely hear comments when I'm in CVS or in and around the community. Oh, I saw that meeting. I love that the board said this, that, or the other. So I do think people are watching. They may not watch it tonight, while we're, but maybe later on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but when you go and, on the YouTube and, it, and you look at the it, dates, it's not that and in the happenings, but think, but there was a. But, but, but I think they're watching it on um, cable news. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, not cable news, yeah. but yeah, the cable news. Yeah. Twenty seven. I think that's where yeah. they're I watching it, not necessarily on YouTube. Court. Also, in the happenings, they can click on, and it's on our website. All of these meetings. Yeah. So when no we way. reference it, we say. <laughs> yeah, we have a little thing that they can just oh my God, click yeah. on it. I'm ever. hoping that, um, you know, again, be because I think a lot of people do watch the 20 channel 27 or whatever, I'm hoping that this replays over and over again. Is there any way to get us on there a little bit more often or get these particular meetings regarding the bond on there a little bit more often? Is that a possibility? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I think it's like 7, 9, 2, you know, it's not... Yeah, so if we can get it played back, maybe that would maybe be a better, a good yeah, way to communicate absolutely. as well. And in your, com your communications plan, I'm sure you're going to probably propose some signage too around the pro around the school. So that if you haven't been thinking about that, I would think about that. As I think well. the signage yeah. is what's going to bring people, like we did last time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Good stuff. Um, so, th so the town hall meetings. Am I in to understand that they would be hybrid? So we will hold them here, and then people could. So how would that work? Does I think hybrid would be, would be ideal if I we can have so some too. sort of, Robin, I don't know if this is something we could do where we could have, um, we can have it broadcasted via Zoom and then also have it somewhat interactive as well as audience members too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, like you a can't have all the board members, yes. or is it just it's going to be like a? a well, well I, we, you can't, you can't without, without making it in a meeting. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if we could. Which is not a big deal as long as we know it. As long as, long the as facilities we, committee makes sense to, to uh -huh. make to make it a meeting versus, yeah. Okay. And um, oh, make it especially the facilities yeah. committee makes more sense to have or, like or some members from some the members facilities that. committee there. Yeah, so we can maybe have a panel, a panel. of 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 yeah. two board members and some facilities committee members and Dom and well, and Russ. What I'm saying, in lieu yeah, of we, meeting, right. um, make, make the panel more more diverse. With the potential. So we'll yeah. Yeah. talk about this yeah. and figure it out, but we definitely need to figure it out soon. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Um, so you said the week of this. Um, I'm proposing the week of the 17th and then maybe the week of the 8th. Because that's 17th. February is, 8th. Yeah. That's the week before. Mm -hmm. And then maybe get one, get one soon, maybe next week or so. Or the week after next, maybe. Yeah, um, that's a good idea. I don't know. I don't know if you've put any thought into that or anything. No. It's, we were thinking of doing one soon and doing one closer. Um, maybe even a two closer. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. But, um, 
Yeah, whatever, whatever you gentlemen can do to get this timeline sped up, whatever miracle or magic you could, you could conjure up. Um, because, uh, yeah, it's important for a host of reasons. Most importantly, we need to get our kids back in that cafeteria. Right. Yeah. Um, so, okay. All right. I would, I would after the meeting like to, like to maybe take a look if we can get in there. Yeah, I, I think we could get in there. Okay. All right, great. All right. Does so, that mean we can't adjourn the meeting? We actually oh. have, no, we'll adjourn the meeting. Yeah. We have a couple more things, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, what unless. What saying about going. I guess if we're all going to go, we may have to adjourn the meeting after, right? Uh, I yeah. want to go. Yeah. Definitely. All right. So we have, we have a little bit of business, though, first, before we do that. I'm excited. All right. Yes. All right, thank gentlemen. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thanks, Russ. Thank you. All right. We'll move right along. Um, we have a consent agenda. Motion to approve consent agenda items two through three. We have a motion. Therese, second. Lori. All in favor. Any discussion on that? All in favor? <laughs> And then we just have personnel recommendations, right? Did I didn't miss anything, right, Robin? That's it. Yep. Two, three. Yeah, two, three. Business, business, of the board. business of the board. Oh, yeah, I did skip over a whole section, didn't I? Wishful thinking on my board. There we go, okay. They're not that long. Yeah, tonight, okay. Be, Approve attack certiary. <laughs> Resolve that in the matter of certiary proceedings, proceeding instituted by Orange World LLC, affecting property located at 65 Maynard Street, town of East Chester, and designated as section 34 block four, lot 10, Tuckahoe Board of Education, Education hereby approves the proposed settlement as recommended by the town of East Chester, which will result <laughs> in an estimated tax refund of $4,055.32. have a motion. Lori, second. Laura, any discussion on that? All in favor? Another tax tertiary resolve that in the matter of a tertiary proceeding instituted by Tuckahoe Developers Inc. Incorporated Division of Poughkeepsie Shopping Center, affected property located at 62 Main Street, Town of East Chester, designated as Section 33, Block 9, Lot 10. The Tuckahoe Board of Education hereby approves the proposed settlement as recommended by the Town of East Chester, which will result in an estimated tax refund of $27,424.77. Do I have a motion? Therese, second. Lori, any discussion on that? All in favor? Okay, and approve a professional services agreement. Resolved that the Board of Education of Tuckahoe Union Free School District hereby approves E2E Exchange LLC in an amount not to exceed $1,250 for professional services performed in the 2022-2023 school year related to the 2023-2024 E-rate funding year. Do we have a motion? Uh, uh, Therese, second. Lori, any discussion on that? All in favor? Okay, and then lastly, we have personnel recommendations resolved that the Board of Education of Tuckahoe Union Free School District approves personnel action items A through D as outlined below. Uh, I have a motion on that. Lori, second Therese, any discussion there? Uh, all right. Okay. All in favor? Very good. Okay. So normally I would go ahead and adjourn the meeting, but if we're going to take a peek together, uh, I guess we can do that and then come back and close. Is that fine? That's why we can we can talk freely amongst each other, and, um, right? Although, it has to, yeah. So why don't we do this? Why why don't we? Um, Maybe we could take turns. Though. We'll take turns. We'll yeah. Take turns. So why don't we just close the meeting and then we'll we'll uh, we'll take turns it reviewing it. So we'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. I have a motion to adjourn. Threat. Second. Laura. All in favor? All right. Thank you.